I've been dreading this, but the time has come. We need to talk about the Nazis. And I'm going to start off by saying that in 2017, when you think of Germany, if the first thing that comes to your mind are the Nazis, World War II, and the Holocaust, you probably have a very narrow worldview that's more defined by ideology than fact. A lot has happened here since 1945, and part of that that happened here was a genuine miracle. But you don't spend long in Germany before you realize that the ghosts of Germany's past still haunt this place in a big way. But rather than taking this past and putting it in a box and shoving it in the closet and never talking about it, Germany is dealing with its past in an extremely responsible and very open way. And if you, if you need to put that into contrast with a way not to handle the past, try to have a really in-depth conversation with an American about the genocide of the Native Americans or a Republican about the Civil Rights Movement. But the really cool thing I did today in Germany was that I went to one of these things that helps Germany deal with its past, and that was an anti-fascist rally. I didn't know what to expect when I went to this thing. I had seen videos of like uh, protests and counter-protests, and I was a little, you know, I didn't know what to expect. But when I got there, I found that it was just a really big party. But before I get too deep, let me set the stage of what happened here in the city of Bad Nandorf. So back in 1945, after Germany had surrendered, the Allies, specifically the British, set up a prison in Bad Nandorf, which is just west of, a little bit west and south of Hanover. And they set up this prison for sort of high-profile Nazi detainees that were awaiting uh, uh, war crimes trials. At some point, there may or may not have been some minor abuse of these Nazi war criminals by the British. The history's a little vague here, but stick with me because that vagueness becomes important in a minute. So fast forward 65 years, and the, the prison is now back to being a medical office, and Bad Nandorf is back to being just a normal town in uh, Lower Saxony. And with the rise of the neo-Nazi movement and the latent fascist movement that was still present in Germany, they decided to use this prison in Bad Nandorf as a rallying point for their fascist movement. And they decided to take that little tiny nugget of possible vague truth about the abuse of Nazi war criminals at the hands of the British as their rallying cry to gather their people to come to Bad Nandorf to march and protest. And for the average German, I would imagine that site was a little disturbing. But it's what happened next that's actually the really cool part. Because one year, a thousand Nazis marched in Bad Nandorf. The second year, the anti-fascists came. Essentially what happened is the second year that the Nazis attempted to do this same march through the streets of Bad Nandorf, the anti-fascists threw a giant party along the streets and did direct action to prevent the Nazis from marching. They blocked the train station so they had to walk through the, the muddy field to get where they needed to go. There were um, uh, all these party whistles and people shouting from balconies. And while there were fewer Nazis marching the second year than the first year, they were vastly, vastly outnumbered by people screaming from the rooftops about how much they loved the modern multicultural Germany. And to this day, the Nazis still have a permit to march on the first weekend in August in Bad Nandorf. But for the last two years, they've been too scared to show up. But as I've learned, lack of opposition is not a reason not to throw a party. And that's exactly what I went to today, anti-fascist party. Even though there weren't Nazis marching in the street today, there was still a pretty good party going on on the streets of Bad Nandorf. It's organized by a uh, pharmacist who owns a uh, pharmacy in the city, and it's called Bad Nandorf is Bunt, which means Bad Nandorf is Colors, 
meaning the multi colors of the people who were there. Uh, it consisted of some speeches by people that uh, I understood a little bit of, but it basically followed the same lines of, we're happy here, we're against the Nazis. And it also had music and beer and bratwurst. On the stage, they invited a Jewish band to come and play traditional Jewish music. Nothing pisses a Nazi off more than Jewish music in public. And then after their performance, a band consisting entirely of refugees that had immigrated to Germany took the stage and played traditional Arabic and Farsi and Turkish music that was really great. That's when everyone started dancing. But just because the Nazis weren't marching in force doesn't mean that the lingering effects of hate didn't find their way into the day. At some point in the days leading up to this anti-fascist rally, someone had painted a swastika on the building that had been the prison. I arrived a little late to actually get a photograph of the graffiti itself, but I was there to capture an image of a woman who is over 70 and has spent the last 30 years going around Germany and painting over signs of Nazism, nationalism, and fascism. I had an opportunity to sit down and talk with different people of different ages and different economic backgrounds, but were all native to the Lower Saxony area and had grown up in or around Baden Andorf. And these people that I spoke with, they were of different ages and genders and economic backgrounds and had different opinions about the world, but they were all united in this concept of showing the fascists that they're not welcome here and that their ideas are old and outdated and are unwelcome in the city of Baden-Nandorf. Had a conversation with an elderly lady and in her broken English, when she learned that I was an American, in her broken English, she took pains to tell me that fascism wasn't just a German problem, it was a global problem and something that we all needed to fight. And I look at things that are going on in my own country, and I think she's right. Perhaps in my country, we would do well to have some America is Bunt parties. Any minute now, the bells will stop and I can keep recording. <laughs>